The Insta360 GO 3 is the most insane example of how capable miniature tech has become. Every time this company releases a new version of this thing, I can't quite believe how much more they've crammed into it. So here are the top 10 things you need to know, starting with the unboxing, because it comes with everything. Every accessory that you could possibly need to make it work at its best is in the box. Would you believe it? The video quality is a really cool example of this progression. Like this is the original Insta360 GO 1 from 2019, and its quality looks like this, which is, you know, it's not cinema quality at 1080p but it's excusable for the size. The Go 2 almost doubles that resolution to 1440p and uses a bigger sensor to let in much more light. I was impressed by this one when I tried it in 2021, but then you've got the Go 3, which shoots at 2.7K, which is even higher. And it's reached a point now where when I'm showing people the footage I've taken on this thing, I'm not there like, just bear in mind it's taken on a tiny little camera the size of my finger. I'm just genuinely proud of it. And on the subject of size, that's number eight. It really is ridiculous what you can do when your camera is this minuscule. All those weird shot ideas you've had that just don't make sense using a DSLR or a phone, there's a very good chance that this will do. And with a lack of size also comes a lack of weight. This thing is 35 grams. It's lighter than your phone. It's lighter than our camera batteries. It's lighter than a lighter. Bruh. It's light enough that you can actually just wear it. And I don't mean with harnesses that make it look like you're about to do one of those Red Bull motorbike stunt tracks, with a pendant that's new and improved actually. So you can now coil up the necklace into the sides of the pendant to turn it into basically a coin that you can keep with you. And then when you want to use the thing, it goes behind your top, the camera sits in front and just captures your point of view without you needing to do anything. And then what makes that proposition even better than it's been in past years is the battery life. The original Go One could do about 16 minutes per charge, which sounds piddly, but it was actually okay because of the way that you use it. This was designed to just sit on your chest, be able to turn itself on periodically, record a 10 second snippet, and then put itself back to sleep. But then with the Go 2, this improved to 30 minutes, which was enough that for me, all concern that I previously had about it potentially running out within the day was over. And now with the Go 3, thanks to more efficient use of the internal space for a bigger battery, lasts 45. 45 minutes of battery on a camera that's basically an oversized paracetamol. <laughs> I find that really impressive. Plus, thanks to improved heat dissipation, especially on this back plate over here, there are now no limits on how long each clip can be. But what if you want stupid levels of battery life? Well, that's where the... <laughs> that's where the action pod comes in. Again, included in the box. It's essentially an external shell for the Go 3 that gives you an easy way to grip the camera if you want to go handheld. Oh, but here's the thing. It pushes the battery all the way to 170 minutes. For context, the pro-grade Sony camera that we're using to film this video on, that lasts about 60 more like 40 nowadays. But it's not just a battery. One of the reasons I find Insta360 products so interesting is that they're constantly thinking, and you can just tell they're constantly thinking, how do we multi-purpose things? How do we make this one thing do as many other things as possible? And now I'm in a tree. Where do we go from here? So this action pod, for example, also has a high-res screen that lets you preview your shots. It flips, so you can do the same for your face. It's a touch screen, so you can use it to toggle settings and use presets and change your mode. It's got this magnetic quick-release latching system for a tripod mount. Again, included in the box, but it's also, and this is the kicker, a Bluetooth remote for the camera. So when the camera's in it, the pins on the back physically connect to the action pod and it works as if it was all just one device. But then when you disconnect it, it just switches to a Bluetooth connection where you can still see what the camera sees, you can control the camera in the same way, and you can preview the shots you've taken to make sure you're happy with them. You could even stick the camera on your cat collar and just record what they get up to. That is, if you have a cat who at least somewhat does what you want them to. Oh yeah, also, stabilization. See, when you have a camera mounted on your person and you're just going about your day, you'd be surprised how much shaking and shuffling happens. This camera just gets rid of it. With three distinct levels of flow state stabilization depending on the activity. It even has an option to horizon level so that even if you flip the entire thing upside down, it still records everything the right way up. And the Go 3 is durable. It's not like military grade or anything. I wouldn't drop it from a plane, although. Imagine the footage. <laughs> but it's strong enough that I haven't had to worry about it. It actually comes with a lens guard attached by default, but also it's watertight, which means that A, you don't have to worry if it rains and it gets wet, but B means that it's actually waterproof to five meters. No, I don't think I can drop it there. Not because the camera can't hack it, more because I can't. But yeah, while I don't exactly have a tropical sea nearby to me where I can test this, based on footage that the company has taken with this, it seems like a cracking camera for taking on like a snorkeling trip. Oh wait, this is actually a, a real life test of how powerful the magnet on the pendant is. Wow, that's how you know the floor's made of metal. But it's not just about video. The other half of the equation is the audio. See, both the Go 1 and the Go 2 have a microphone facing up, which is focused on picking up your voice. But this time round, 
there are two microphones. One facing up to listen to you, same as last time, but also one facing out. And this has a few perks. It means that A, if you wanted to better hear what's happening around you, this can now do that. It means that if you're filming from unusual angles, there'll always be at least one microphone that's picking up your voice directly. But then also, being able to hear both your voice and the environmental noise separately allows the camera to treat those audio tracks individually. So if you wanted to, let's say, reduce the amount of background noise around you, the camera can then use its understanding of what it picks up from the front mic to understand what part of the overall noise coming in is background noise. And so it can cut that out and focus just on the words that you're saying. I've always said that audio quality is 50% of the total video experience. So I'm really glad that they've got around to addressing this. Oh yeah, and there's now a se Oh yeah, and there's now a secondary benefit. Oh yeah, and there's now a sec- Oh yeah, and there's now a secondary benefit to being able to hear yourself clearly voice control. So let's say you've propped it into a precarious position and you no longer want to touch it. All you need to do is to just say, start recording and it will do it for you. It's steeper than I expected. <laughs> but nothing beats the modes on the Go 3. If you watch my videos on past Insta360 cameras, you'll know that they already have the most insane suite of creative ways to shoot videos. You can swap out your sky. You can automatically add light trails to an action sequence. Their app can auto edit your videos for you, syncing them up to the beat of the music using artificial intelligence. But there's even more this time around. For example, pre-recording, which lets the camera save up to 30 seconds of what it sees before you've even hit the record button. You've got looped recording, which continuously records, but then only saves the last few minutes at the point where you click stop, which is a really good way to just save storage space. And then timed capture, which if you want to capture a sunrise at a certain time, but you don't actually want to get up for it, this thing can turn itself on automatically at that time, capture for you, and then turn itself off again. Hit the link in the description to get the go through.